What is going on, YouTube? Welcome to the live stream. Wow, it feels like a long time. <laughs> we didn't do a live stream last weekend, and it feels like forever ago. It's, it feels like we're a year in the future or something like that. Oh, my gosh. That was, it's crazy not doing a live stream. Welcome, everybody. We've got some crazy stuff out here tonight. And the new background, I think, is going to do much better uh, with live streams. I think it's going to create a much more crisp image. Uh, first off, before we get any further, uh, please take the time to subscribe to the Knife Nuts podcast. The link is the very first link in the description. I know a lot of you have heard of the Knife Nuts podcast. You guys probably listen to them, right? Now, their YouTube channel, they kind of did some stuff for a little bit, and then they decided to dedicate to the, the podcast, which you can also go listen to on their website. But uh, I've been talking with Levon, and uh, uh, they're going to do a lot more stuff on YouTube, a lot more like uh, like other stuff outside of the podcast, and they're going to be more frequent, which I was in full support of. Um there are very few things that can capture my attention, as you could imagine, uh, for longer than about five minutes. Ironically, as a person who creates uploads that last 20 to 30 minutes at times, right? But seriously, the Knife Nuts podcast is one of the only things that I can sit and enjoy for long periods of time. Um, I found them to be not only incredibly entertaining, but just totally unfiltered, real, like they... <laughs> They will say exactly what they think. I just, I've never been more thoroughly entertained by something knife related for such a long period of time. It is worth your time. They've actually got a couple new uploads uh, here recently and they've got face cams. Uh, Levin and Dave actually have done a couple of recent uploads you guys can check out where they just kind of talk. They just chat about stuff. They say what they think, right? They look at some stuff and they say, here's what I think. I think this looks like crap. I think this looks great, right? It's just, it's excellent. I just enjoy them so thoroughly. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's the very first link in the description. This will be out here for the re remainder of the evening. Take some time, subscribe to their channel. It will be worth your time. They're going to be uploading some super cool stuff in the very near future. And I'm very excited about it. So I want you guys to do that. I do that at the beginning. So the people watching in the future... We'll know that right away instead of having to sit through half the live stream. What is up? People saying that I screwed them up. Oh, Desert Smeagol. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I get a lot of people telling me either they're mad at me, they are directly angry at me for screwing them up and it's a joke, it's they're being joking, or their significant other is upset with me for screwing them up. So sorry. Yeah, we have some crazy stuff out here. Uh, shout out again to. Sierra underscore bound on Instagram for some incredible knives that I would absolutely never be able to get my hands on. Some of this stuff is gone before it's even a thought, right? Obviously, we've got the art. Now, he's got a, there's a couple of Hermans up here, some less, less expensive Hermans versus the full custom that I handled that he also sent, but still very expensive, right? Uh, that all of his stuff is kind of has its own place. The RJM uh, and Shirogorov collab, uh, Russian Overkill, and of course the the uh, I almost called the the Borka Blade Stitch. Those are very very expensive knives. So they obviously have their own little barriers, their own little perimeters. Uh, it would be my nightmare to damage that stuff. So yeah, it's going to be kind of in its own little space tonight. That that stuff. Uh, Spirit Whiskey's in here. What's up, man? Um, so how have you guys been? Uh, everybody having a good weekend? I hope you guys all had an excellent weekend last time. By the way, sorry for the mix up right before we got started there. It, YouTube is so fickle with live streams. You, you got to get everything. Like there was probably a notification that went out like live stream and then it disappeared and then another one got created. It's because if you don't do everything, I have to make sure I got two separate areas to connect to Wi-Fi in this house. And if the Phone's not connected to the right Wi-Fi. It screws it up. And if you try to change that before you start to li the live stream, YouTube's like, ah! you know, so it, I had to read. Sorry, I had to redo it. Anyways. <laughs> well, it's my time to do laundry since metal is live streaming. I kind of figured a lot of you guys save your, you know, if, if people like sometimes I do uh, like evening chores and stuff. So people just pop the live stream on and listen to it. Right. I talk enough that it probably doesn't 
100% matter what I'm saying as long as there's noise, right? That's kind of what I put YouTube on for. It's just noise. And I'm definitely that. I am the bringer of noise. All right, let's see. Kyle Roberts, what's up, man? Are you going to get on the Tempest pre-order? What config are you going for? Yes, and it's a secret. <laughs> Absolutely. That's another reason to subscribe to the Knife Nuts podcast and jump on their Instagram and follow them there too. Because holy crap, the production Tempest is coming. Guys, when I showed this, by the way, if you don't know who those guys are, these are the, if you remember this, right? Everybody going, well, why can't I get that? I want that. Sorry. I mean, but yeah, that's, I mean, these, this is the uh, uh, production uh, Sharp by Design Evo Typhoon. These are the guys who collectively, I mean, it's Brian Nadeau and the guys from the Knife Nuts podcast who, you know, brought this to the world. Uh, and it was a pre-order and you could sign up for it and then you had to wait and then it was there and now it's not available, right? So you don't want to miss the Tempest. It's going to be a front flipper and it looks great. You can go see the first two options and blade shapes for pre-order coming, I believe, next weekend. So if you want to get in on that, go to their Instagram, check it out, and then go to the, you'll need to go to the website the uh, Sharp by Design website next weekend to make sure, but just subscribe. That's the safe bet. Just subscribe, follow them on Instagram. Just do that. Uh, let's see here. Do you do giveaway? I do lots of giveaways and there's a huge one coming up. Everybody uh, excited for the 50K giveaway. We are on pace to hit that mark pretty much on the dot. Uh, last, the last 30 days were, I think it was, I think it was 2,900 subscribers. So it's about right what I expected. So we're probably between a month and a month and a half and a, away from doing the 50 K giveaway, which will be a lot of really cool knives, including of course the $500 knife that I'm going to be purchasing for you guys, uh, here coming soon, I'll do a top five video, uh, and we'll, uh, uh, kind of figure out, uh, I'll let you guys know which ones are vastly in the lead, and then we'll do a final poll, and then that's what I'll be purchasing. So thank you to everybody who has subscribed and helped this channel reach the ridiculous, <laughs> the ridiculous, I don't want to call it a goal, I didn't, I didn't really expect to get here, but the, the crazy milestone of 50,000, that's just unbelievable. Uh, the Veros, yeah, let's get the Veros out. So um, this guy actually will be a part of that giveaway. This is the Vero Engineering Synapse Gen 2, which was donated by Zeke. That's what he preferred me to call him. So say thank you to Zeke. Uh, and it is excellent. I think the winner of this will be very, very happy. But again, I know people always ask me, how do I enter? You can't enter yet because I haven't done it. <laughs> so there's Stasa. Will you be at Blade this year? Not the one in the summer. I'm aiming for the one uh, later on in the when is it? Is it not October? Or the one that's later later down the road is the one I'm kind of aiming for. We had thought, of, my wife and I had thought about attending the one coming up, but it's just not going to work. So yeah, later, later down the road for sure. I know I keep pushing that off. I said that like over a year ago, like I'm going blade and then it just, you know, it didn't happen. But yeah, for sure. Thank you, Stasa. Subscribe to Stasa 23 for sure. Wealth of knowledge and content there. The knife guy, what's up? He says, what's up, Complex? He's got the Knife Guy name, and he's got the Silent Complex logo, the Knight. Love it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> You're welcome to use my stuff for stuff. It doesn't bother me at all. People ask me about that. Do you, do you care? Like, people are using your logo? I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> don't pretend to be me. But, yeah, if you want to, like, you, you know, if you want to put the logo in pictures, I don't care. That's free advertising. Show support for the channel. That's fine with me. Um, let's see here. Oh, you noticed that the dark horse has jewelry. Oh my god, I forgot to write his Instagram down. God dang it, if he's watching this live stream, he's gonna be so mad at me. This awesome guy messages me on Instagram and he's like, Hey, I know you were looking for steel flame, uh, you know, bling for your hinders. And listen, that stuff is for some people and it's not for others, right? But for those of you who don't know. Derek Obataki of Steel Flame did a collaboration with Hinderer, and actually, I think it's ongoing. He makes uh, special parts for the um, for Hinderer knives. 
they are very, very rare and very expensive. Dare I say, uh, well, I, I know this is this is going to shock some people, and I get it. Um, this little thing, which is essentially a nut, you can see the screw is actually reversed. It's a nut for the XM24, specifically for the XM24, cross and shield. Uh, silver, actually. It looks bronze. This one's silver. Now, I have no idea what they originally went for, but what they go for now on eBay is about $250. Yes, you heard that correctly. Now, this gentleman uh, messaged me on Instagram and um, he said, hey, I bought this, but I think it'd be really, if you, if you wanted it, I think it'd be really cool. Um, and I'll make you a super deal on it. And holy crap, he made me a super deal on that. And I've been hunting that stuff forever. Been trying to get that steel flame gear forever. And uh, I finally found one of the pieces. So that was a cool thing to check off my list. So thank you very much. And I, I'm so sorry. I can't have his, I don't have his name on it. I'm so dumb of me. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Pre on the regular tempest or wait for KNP. I'm torn. I don't know. You just have to wait. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to let them do all that stuff. Just make sure you freaking subscribe to the Knife Nuts podcast on you. I promise you. Man, just, I, I love just turn, like, you guys talk about doing chores. And I, literally tonight, I washed dishes and I listened to their, their newest two uploads. And it was awesome. Just, just them, just two of the four, just sitting there commenting on this. It's just, the other thing you guys have to remember is they're both incredibly not, like, I have to go to Levon for information all the time. Uh, is and, and Dave is like that too. They're both an incredible source of information. They are so vastly more knowledgeable than I am when it comes to all this stuff. And so it's really awesome hearing them comment. I mean, I, like we all have different tastes. Like we don't all agree on everything. And that's fine. But it's just it's so cool to hear. Like they remember every collaboration, every maker, every you know, and they can relate it to things that I would. They they piece things together in a way that I'm like, I never would have thought of that. It's just really great. You will benefit greatly from listening to them. And they're awesome to listen to while you're doing chores or whatever. I used to listen to them while I was driving between towns to, to sell digital advertising around here. So, uh, let's see. Titanium skills dropped where? Why? Why does this happen during my live streams? Where do they drop? How am I not aware? Why am I not aware of this? I'm supposed to be supplying this information to you guys. Actually, truthfully... You guys tell me, and then, or like a few of you tell me, and then I try to tell everybody. That's that's generally how it goes. You guys are a better notification system than anything I can sign up for on a retailer website, right? <laughs> I cham a lot, cat one. Um, liking the Chavez, can't find one anywhere. So the two two nine redemption's pretty scarce at the moment, but there are liberations floating around out there. I've seen them on a few different websites. You should, if you the Liberation is just as robust. It's just got a little slimmer profile. And if you like the look of the 229, you'll probably really enjoy the Liberation. Um, hey, MC, have you checked out the Prometheus Design Works STS? Just got one in full tie, and it seems right up your alley. I've been eyeing that thing like a hawk. As you'll find out in tomorrow's Knife Guy episode, um, I have a pile up of uh, channel funds that I've been waiting to spend on something. And that is one of the things that is in uh, my shopping cart right now, but I just haven't quite pulled the trigger yet. So, uh, let's see here. Mm, thought I got my grill knife and I saw a Olamix on DLT trading. It's all your fault. MC. Yeah. Seriously. I mean, like, I can't push more people towards the Olamix on DLT trading enough. Have you guys gone to look at the amazing gallery of Olama Cutlery Knives on DLT? It's just like a, a mountain of treasure just sitting there. And I, I can't help but feel like they're sitting there because people, there's not enough people that know. Oh my God, like anything you can imagine, multiple models and like every configuration, it's just insane. Use the link in the description. Well, you don't have to, but it, it benefits the channel if you use the link for DLT in my description and go look at the, Freaking Olamix, right? Use your second device. Keep one device on the live stream and, and scroll through the Olamic cutleries on DLT. Oh my gosh, so cool. That Rainmaker, I finally have somebody sending me an Olamic cutlery Rainmaker. Holy crap, that thing is looks awesome. 
I've handled a ton of Olamics. If you're wondering, are they high quality? Are they U.S. made? Yes, they're U.S. made. Yes, they're incredibly high quality. In fact, in a lot of ways, you're kind of hard pressed to find that level of customization for, you know, I mean, like you have to you have to go hundreds of dollars up oftentimes to find that level of customization in a knife that's built that well. So Olamic's awesome. Uh, Eugene, who's behind Olamic, awesome. I've been obsessed with Olamic cutlery since, God, probably like four years before I started the channel, I think. Uh, got me a Hinder or Harpoon Spanto Gen 3 Eclipse. Congratulations to the people who picked those up. I got, <laughs> I was, I saw, I was just scrolling through my Instagram and I saw on USMA Blade like, hey, look at these. And I was like, what, what? They just, they shadow dropped out of nowhere. USMA Blade got some and then DLT got some and they were just snapped up immediately. Congratulations to the people who got those. That's probably the most attractive eclipse that's ever dropped. And it's in Triway. Super cool. And now you can get tie scales for those things, which I see you guys also bought up immediately from DLT Trading. Um, so, yeah. CKF Evo 2.0. Where do I get one? From Russia with knives. I don't. I guess they're going to do more. I guess. Um, I don't know. I, I heard that they were, but I don't know that. It's awesome. That's all I can tell you. Hey, it's just more of the same. Metal Complex waving a knife out of, in front of everybody's face like, it's so cool. We, yeah, let's get really excited. Let, Jimmy Fallon the crap out of this thing, right? And then you can't get, I'm sorry. It's, it seems to be synonymous with my channel where I just do, I do that. I want to show it to you, but then everybody gets mad. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, uh, MC, what's up, man? Oh, this is Zell. What's up, dude? Oh, gosh, I can't even fit this. Duh, this is gonna make Zell laugh. You guys want to see what Zell made for me? Get ready. Oh, I can't even fit it on camera, but this will be funny. So, Zell is behind uh, ZB Customs on Instagram. Zell made this by hand, and it will not fit on camera at all. Are you guys ready? <laughs> it's the Golden Knight helmet. He made this, made it by hand. I can't, there's no, I can't, I can't fit it on camera at all. He made this entire thing. It's huge. It's the size of like, it's the size of like a war shield. Made it. It's like 3D. Uh, the background is black and then you can see it's kind of like la layered up top, but he captured the entirety of the detail for the, for the night helmet for the channel. Oh my gosh. I love this thing. And I need, I need to finish my basement so I can mount this and the other plaque that he made on my wall. And then I want to mount the sword, which Many of you guys know that I have. Between those two things, I want to mount this guy. <laughs> because that's just that's just all of my childhood dreams coming together. Is the whole knight and sword theme of this channel. And Zell's amazing custom work. <laughs> I'm so pumped about that. Okay, hang on. Let me let me where's my Gatorade? There it is. You can't lose that. Don't lose your Gatorade, folks. Zell, I'm sorry I couldn't show that off in all of its glory. I just don't want to move the... I can't move the camera arm because that'll be a nightmare for everybody watching. <laughs> Akal says, I don't understand why people get so mad when you show off unavailable stuff. I, I want to see what it's like either way. I mean, I can't buy a McLaren F1, but I definitely want to see it. I agree. I watch stuff. I watch videos on stuff that I can't get all the time. I think what it's usually people who just like randomly click in and they just happen to click on a video. Like if they click on one video and then they want, and it's a knife that they, I, they can't get, and then they don't watch for a month and then they come back and like a month later, they click on another one. Then they say that. Right. So it, they just, they don't know that I'm showing, you know, five to five to six videos a week that are knives that you can get. So it's just weird. <laughs> old, old BP six, nine. <laughs> That's what I'm going to have to refer to him. <laughs> Thanks for the donation. Will you do another fixed blade video soon? It'd be cool. Yeah, actually, I've got a pretty sweet fixed blade over here that I'm going to show down the road. Yeah, absolutely. Always happy to show cool fixed blades. Uh, let's see here. Uh, two Hermans on the table. It's 1400 Yeah, the ones left and right of that are a lot more. Should we show these off a little bit? I don't know which one you guys like more. I don't know which one I like more. Let's be... Very careful with this. Um, Shira Goroff and RJ Martin. 
Russian overkill. Oh, God. The, the cleanliness of this knife. Oh, God. There is nothing like a freaking ultra precision Shurigorov. And to anybody who's never handled one, you know, yeah, it probably just looks like titanium and, oh, who knows what the steel is. Does anyone know what the steel is on this beautiful beast? Anyone want to shout it out? What's the steel, guys? Somebody in here knows. <laughs> Somebody say it. It's M398. <laughs> Not M390. M398, the shadowy new kid on the block, right? Yeah, this is the new upgrade. It's the new advanced M390. I, I'm I'm not a metallurgist, right? M398 is supposed to be superior to M390 in terms of edge retention. It does have really, really good stainless qualities. I think, as far as I understand, not quite as good as M390. You can correct me in there. It will definitely be harder to sharpen. Absolutely. But it maintains that micro clean structure and has a lot of the qualities that we want. Basically, it's just like, you know, it's like there's... There's a Super Saiyan 1 and Super Saiyan 2. Super Saiyan 3. Like, it's just like, you know, it's that same kind of deal. Hang on. My, my live stream quality just went to absolute garbage. Let me, there we turn it back up there. M398 on that bad boy. So, yeah. For, you, for those of you wondering, what's the price on that? Where can I get it? You can't get it. It was limited, right? I never hope to actually even handle it on this channel. Um, it, uh... When it dropped, I think the retail price on it was like 1600 or so. Now, if you find them at other retailers that acquired them so that they could sell them, you'll probably see that it was listed at about 2200 maybe 2300 You can expect that price to be much higher on the secondary market. Basically, it's through the roof. Uh, it, it was expensive to begin with. Oh, 2500 Yeah. The original, the original retail price of it before these other retailers got a hold of it. Like if you if it was coming direct from Shirogorov, I think it was 1500 1600 But yeah, when you guys are seeing listings online at 20, so that's after the retailers acquired it apparently and then sought to resell it. Um, and secondary will be will be higher. 2500 There we go. G Man, 2500 There you go. And of course, the equally unavailable and very beautiful, very unobtainable, right? This is the actual Borka Blades stitch. This variant coming in a uh, beautiful, I don't even know what we call this texturing, uh, titanium, contour titanium. And then we have, I believe, M390 on this sort of black washed. But yeah, this thing is ridiculous. It's every bit as magnificent as I had hoped that it would be. I mean, it's just, this is, this is ergonomic masterwork. <laughs> it's just crazy how good this thing feels. I'm sorry that I can't share the feeling with you guys. Like, I know, I understand like all of your senses are like, I want, I feel like I can feel how that feels, right? You can see my hands manipulating this thing, right? It's exactly what you'd expect. It's exactly what it looks like. It's perfect. It's insane. I'm happy just to have handled I probably will never acquire it. But you know what? I got to handle it thanks to Sierra Bounds, right? Both of those are his. I'm happy with that. <laughs> Am I properly expressing the feels, right? <laughs> that was my goal there. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I don't know. It's like an, the blade is like an arrowhead. It's like an arrowhead harpoon, right? That's what it reminds me of is it's like an arrowhead like it's just crazy i mean like yeah i mean if, like people are going to quick point out it's so excessive it's so unnecessary well yeah geez like anybody who's trying to seek these things it's not like bork is sitting around like oh gosh how do i sell all of these all of these bork stitches that i made how how am i ever gonna no they're gone people want them so badly they are gone before he can even think to make them right they are in excess as would be expected by the potential buyers. They are looking, those people are looking for the crazy and the excess. But, I'm, but you know, the funny thing is, is that it actually really fits the hand well. Like if I, I mean, I, I couldn't imagine actually going out and using it, but if I did, I'd be like, wow, this is really comfortable, you know? <laughs> well, I, 
open a letter. I, you know, I mean, what I would do with knives, which I would be terrified to even do with that. I just, yeah. Is that the CRKT provoke? Yeah, it, yeah, it is. Oh boy, this is a weird one, but here, watch this. Watch how cool this is, right? Here it is, the CRKT provoke. Shabam! Oh boy, that's weird. But here's why I like it. It's because it's different, right? This is wild. You can get these right now. CRKT provoke. I think they're a hundred bucks. Still have no idea what the steel is. I got no use for a karambit. No use. But boy, is it cool. And it is, I'll admit to you guys, it is fun. To, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm putting my thumb right here and I'm pushing down. Whoops. Oh, I didn't do it right. Don't judge me on that. It is cool to kick that thing out backwards. That's that's cool. That's a feeling that my hands are not used to, but it's satisfying. Um, almost pulled the trigger on a Borka Bond Shylock today. I don't even know what that is. But decided not to. And five minutes later, the guy sold it to someone else. I bet he's stoked. <laughs> that was, that's a really sad story, Kane. <laughs> but thank you for sharing. I, but I know that feeling all too well. If you're like, eh, should I? Oh, it's gone. Oh, and then your soul, your soul just dies in a frozen lake. <laughs> it's just alone with the sound of the wind, right? There's no animals around. There's nothing making noise. It's the dead of winter. In, in in a purgatory in a dead universe. That's what it feels like. Have I painted it? Have I painted a solid pick? That's what it feels like to lose out on something like that. Sounds like a <laughs> sounds like a, a crappy book that you feel compelled to read. Okay. Uh, the, the provoke is cool. Not a fan of the pocket clip though. It didn't work for me. What pocket clip? This one doesn't have a pocket clip. It just you just put you just put it in your pocket. That one doesn't have a pocket clip. Are there any slip joints you carry slash would carry? I would carry the one from Serge uh, Pencheco. I would carry that one for like a higher end one. The one that I I don't really carry it anymore. The Victorinox Cadet is just in my truck all the time. It's just always there. But yeah, I mean, I would carry a Victorinox um, and I don't know, I, if I'm gonna carry a slip joint, it's gotta be real small and real thin for sure. The metal thingy is a pocket clip. The metal thingy. Oh, what, wait. Oh my gosh, is this some sort of hidden? The metal thingy, does this come out? Oh my gosh. Look at that. I didn't even know that was there. I would have done the whole review like, there's no pocket clip. This sucks. Like, I would have literally, oh my God. It is, okay, there's a perfect example, guys. That's why it's so important to me that you guys point this crap out because I never would have found that. You, I, I try to point out all the time, I would be lost on certain elements if my audience did not correct me or point certain things out to me at times. Because, and I have done that before. I've done a full review like, this not going to be so much better if this. And then people in my comment section are like, you idiot, it has that. You just didn't notice. And I'm like, well, crap, I guess that's on the internet forever. Because I, I mean, like, I don't want to delete it. I'd rather it be there so I can reference like, yeah, that was a learning situation for me, right? <laughs> I don't want to delete it and just be like, nope, I already knew that. I'm just going to erase the evidence of it. No, <laughs> but it is important that people point that stuff out. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you guys are getting a kick out of it. Great. I just looked at the live chat. Everybody's cracking up. That's fantastic. Good. Yeah. Laugh at my pain while I, my soul dies in a frozen lake in purgatory. Yeah. Uh. Cheers, Gatorade for all. Okay. <laughs> My take on Strider knives. I love the Ergos. I'm not quite sure why they cost so much money. I mean, like, I I, I get 400. I get it. Like, that makes sense. You, I'll I'll put them. They're they're built differently than than Chris Reeve knives and Hinderer knives. Um, but are they are they built to be used? 100. percent Yeah. I mean. I trust Strider's heat treat, blade geometries. I think they're very purpose built. Why people pay 800, 900, 1,000? I mean, people are always like, where can I get them where I can't find them? Go to Arizona Custom Knives right now. I'm pretty sure I saw six of them pop up today for 900 to $1,100, right? So they're there. You just have to pay way too much money for them. 
some of them are listed as new from Maker. Like, right? I mean, by the way, if you guys are wondering, like, can, is, is Arizona Knives a good place to buy? I've bought from Arizona Knives before. The way that they describe them, if they say excellent quality, it means excellent quality. If there's a scuff or a scratch or something, they will put it in the description, right? If it's a used knife, because a lot of what you buy in Arizona Custom Knives is on consignment, like somebody has ha listed it through Arizona Custom Knives. But they check it out and they're honest about it. They've always been honest. I've bought, I think I bought three or four knives from Arizona Customs before. It's always come exactly the way. But you're, you're going to pay secondary for it for sure. So <laughs> Super Steel Steve Striders or a $300 knife. Change my mind. I know better than to try and change your mind, Steve. I'd rather that we, we just both go, meh. <laughs> that seems like a safer bet to me. <laughs> no. Steve is the wind. Right. You can, I mean, in some situations you can harness the wind, but do you want to stand in front of it? Right. Do you want to try and create a blockade? That doesn't work out. Ask, uh, ask Matt trucks with a trailer. Doesn't work out. Not super aerodynamic. Don't argue with the wind. Right. It's not about right or wrong. It's just sometimes that's what happens with the, you know, with, with a, a certain type of force. I <laughs> mean, you'd be dancing around it. <laughs> Hmm. That was the end of a room temperature Gatorade. Not my favorite experience. Oh boy. Hey, 175 people in here at 30 minutes. That's great, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, which Vera knives are those? We have the Synapse uh, Gen 2 and the Synapse XL. Listen, I love the, the Gen 2. I love the standard size one. But I got to tell you guys, I'm in love with the XL. Like, I just love it platonically, right? But, oh, God. And the one that was sent to me has the Timascus clip and backspacer. This is just excellent. I Honestly, I never would. Not that I don't respect Best Tech, but holy crap. I didn't think they were capable of this. That's great. I mean, a lot of the credit goes to the designer, right? I mean, like, OEM manufacturing only can only translate so well unless you have an excellent design, right? The design is excellent. It translates really well with Best X OEM work. So uh, that's Nate. There he is right there, Nate Prince. Yeah. Thank you for creating a, a new obsession for me. Uh, let's see. You did it sound. Oh, you know, that was definitely me unscrewing a, 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 the cap of a Gatorade for sure. <laughs> is Steve, I haven't looked through it. Did Steve reply to my analogy? <laughs> Gently blows MC's <laughs> ear. That's why Steve's always nice in my live streams because I don't. Li, li, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna throw I'm not gonna I'm not gonna throw down with Steve. I'm just not gonna do it. You know, it, it'd be stupid. You gotta pick your battles. I'm not, I'm just never, I'm never, I'm going to be friends with Steve. And uh, I mean, honestly, legitimately, I, I do. I, I talk with Steve and he's not sweet. I, I just like Steve. But yeah, sometimes you just, you got to, you got to, you got to make good choices, you know? Uh, oh yeah, the TRM Shadow. That's Nick's actually. That's from Nick Shabazz. Oh boy. Now listen, I, I like the, um, the TRM, uh, Adam, I did, and everybody was all crazy about it. It was cool. I liked it. I was like, yeah, it's made well. I recommend it. But I just didn't, I wasn't like, oh my God, my soul needs this, right? Now, this guy. Oh, this is a oh boy, this is a this is a good one. Plus, it has those, you know, crispy, you know, I just my hands are like, oh yes. Yeah, put me in it, read me a story and put me to sleep, right? It just it's so comfy. It's it's just in the the blade and the profile. This just looks great, and the the action is just freaking crazy. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Sorry, spoil that review. That's one. That one's gonna get a shining review. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, let's see. I'm so looking forward to the Vero Isotope. Yeah, I need to check that one out. For sure. I finally got to talk with him. He's nice. That guy's he's a really nice guy. Always just makes me feel. I mean, you know, when you interact, like a lot of people celebritize people on Instagram and, and I do that too. Like certain makers, I'm like, wow, I really like their stuff. And they just seem like this sort of, what's the word for it? 
the celestial being, right? That you can't, it's there, but you can't really communicate with it. And then Instagram allows you to just be like, hey, and they're like, hey, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> you're like, oh, they're, they're a real person. So, and I, so I forget, you know, so, and, and we just, it was a quick back and forth, but he's, he was really nice. So, um, <laughs> let's see here. Stasa enjoys his shadow too. So there you go. You got the Stasa stamp. You, you have my giggly Jimmy Fallon stamp that comes with a lot of stuff because I get super excited, right? Everybody knows, right? Everybody knows I'm going to be kind of, I'm going to be nice about stuff that I'm like, eh, it's okay, right? But I'm going to freak out about stuff. That like, but, you know, so sometimes sometimes a different stamp goes a long way. I, it, when, if, if Stoss is like, I like this, it's cool. I'm like, yeah, I have to get my hands on that. Joe, I'm so sorry. I really want to try to pronounce your last name, but I know I will mess it up. But I will say thank you for that donation. That's very nice. This is MC Thoughts on the Koenig. Thoughts on Koenig is a brand. And the rumored upcoming mini Arias. I believe that that is very real. I believe. My believies tell me that. Thoughts on Koenig as a brand? At A+. Plus. A+. Plus. Holy moly. Yeah, if you're going to spend that type of money on a knife and you're looking at Koenig, that's money well spent. Uh, yeah, 100%. I'm, I'm behind them 100%. Absolutely. Thank you for that donation. Uh, Koenig Arias is one of the most excellent knives that has ever been created. It has consistently made my top 10 or top 20 greatest folding knives of all time. And I'll, spoiler alert, the next time I do that video, the Koenig Arias will be on that list. Uh, 100%. It has not been knocked off <laughs> by anything. I promise you that. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> if Shabazz doesn't like a knife, then it sits on the shelves. I trust it. I, I mean, like Nick, Nick does have that effect on me. I, like when people talk about the Shabazz effect, I mean, it's, you know, the, it, it's partially kind of a joke and it's partially kind of a real thing. I mean, a lot of us watch Nick Shabazz and a lot of us have watched him for a long time. And I still will, you know, two or three times a week, we'll go to his channel and check out what he's got and just sit back and watch and enjoy it the same way that I always have. And I take his opinion very seriously. It doesn't, I, it doesn't, my taste and his taste don't always sync up, but his observations are very real and they, they make sense to me. Right. And they affect me more or less. Right. I mean, like his observations and what bothers him about certain knives, they've, they, they may affect him in a different way because of what, he, what his environment consists of and what he's using his knives for, but they're, they're legitimate observations, positive or negative. Right. And so I, I take that into consideration. What I've tried to do here recently is not watch his reviews about any knives that I'm about to review, specifically the ones that he has sent me. I have uh, no, I have no idea if he's reviewed the shadow. Anything that he sends me, I intentionally don't want because I don't want to be, I don't want to be like I don't want my subconscious to be swayed. I feel like I owe it to myself and you guys to give my full real opinion. So, but yeah, yeah, I like. Have I said that before? I like Nisha Bass. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, thanks for the donation. Hey, that's the man. I'm pretty sure that's him. I'm pretty sure that's I maybe it is. Scott, make yourself known if that's you. I'm pretty sure that's Sierra underscore brown. Everybody say hi to Scott, the gentleman who supplied the uh RGM Martin Shiro collab, the Borka Stitch, the Herman uh Sting, and this um this uh Herman um Slim also. What's up, Scott? Thanks so much, man. It's been really, really fun sharing part of your ridiculous collection. Oh my God. Seriously, go to <laughs> go to his Instagram and just look at like this is but a small, this is just a peek at, at his collection. It's absolutely ridiculous. You guys drool over my stuff. My stuff is not like I love my stuff, but it's nothing compared to his stuff. That's yeah, he has one of the most impressive knife collections I've ever seen in my life. It's just ridiculous. Every crazy thing you could imagine. He's like, yeah, I've got one of those. <laughs> I've got the special crazy, you know, rainbow edition of that. And it's, it's like, oh, you know, that's the only thing I'm capable. Of. I'm just, I, all I can do is burp and fart at the same time and then pass out, you know. Uh, FG Blades. Think there will ever be a mini 8020 or more shark locks in general? Yes and yes. I do think that. In fact, I very strongly think that very strongly 
think, think that. Yeah, very strongly. <laughs> yeah, those, the future is bright for the shark lock, guys. Just, just fall asleep tonight knowing that the shark lock will be <laughs> part of our lives, I think. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Kyle Roberts asked, asked a question. I'll wait for, um, to Scott, for Scott to answer that. Cause I don't, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to steal anybody's thunder. I don't, this is, this is real. Oh, there's 200 people in here. Hey, woo. What's up guys. This is legitimately how I view this live stream. It, it really does just feel like I'm sitting in a room talking with a bunch of people. I don't, it, this, this live stream has felt less and less like my live stream and more and more like everybody's live stream. I know that sounds cool. Like, oh my God, MC's like, oh, I just want to share it with her. I just feel like part of the gang. We're just all about, no, I mean, I mean it. It feels less and less like celebratory MC live stream. It, it feels more and more like just a place where people hang out Saturday evening after all the other live streams are over like that. I mean, it's not like anybody's more or less important. It's just, this is just kind of the Saturday evening hangout. And I don't know. That's, that's what I've tried to make this be in it. And it initially it was like, yeah, for the channel. And then I, now it's just like something I want to do every Saturday. It was a bummer missing it. We had fun. I had family time last weekend, but that's what I mean when I say it felt so long since the last time I did a live stream, because it, it just, I'm, I'm, I like to do this. That's why I do it. It's not obligatory. So Anyways, I have no idea what triggered that, but there's there's my thoughts in my head. Um, where's the did Scott reply? Okay. Wait, where's Scott? Scott's a nice guy. He's a he's a mysterious fellow, but he's a nice guy. I've had a, a lot of joy. Here's another thing Scott does that I just love. I always tell people notes, please notes, please send notes. They're, they're just wonderful when you send notes with your stuff. Cause I've got a very, a very intricate sorting system here because I'm, I'm very, there's, there's a lot of stress with handling other people's stuff and keeping it safe. And when people send notes, it, it makes that so much easier and I can sleep at night. Scott sends everything. He sends the overnight bag. He sends the toothbrush. He sends the, the, you know, the moisturizer. He sends the, you know, the bedtime story. He sends everything. I mean, I'm joking, but he sent the stuff he sends is just wonderful. It's all typed up and it's all, it's so inclusive and he highlights things. It's just wonderful. It's so perfect. That just is so awesome. It just, it's, I love it. And I keep that stuff with his knives and it's just, per I can always, look back into it and I get the detailed information behind the item. It's just wonderful. So thank you, Scott, for doing that. Introverted two-way. Thanks for the donation to Saturday Good Vibes. Yes, to Saturday. Raise your Gatorades, everybody. I know you guys are doing that at home, on your couch, on your lawn chair, right? Maybe some of you are sitting on your roof, right? On the tailgate of your uh, truck or car. Maybe your car has a tailgate. I don't know. Whatever. Gatorades. Cheers. Thank you for that donation. That was really nice. Sorry, I was walking, putting something back on my in my other display case there. Um, XM24 Hoback Husky. I'm ordering one tonight. Your choice. Well, I do not want to have that much power over your choice. Um, I've never handled the Husky. I do like Jake Hoback knives, though, and he does the robust thing really well. You you know my preference is going to be with Hinderer because I'm a diehard Hinderer fan, so it's a bias. like. Let me be clear about that. It's very biased. So, Stacy, what's up? Stacy Bolstered Blades rocking that gold helmet. That's awesome. But yeah, that's bot. I'm going to say go the 24, but let me be clear. It's very biased and it's based on no experience with a Husky. So, <laughs> I'm on a lawn chair on Mark. Michael Morgan, I very much enjoyed reading your comments. Every time, like I read everybody's comments. I'm I'm super dedicated to my comment section. Even if you even if I don't interact with your comment, you can pretty much guarantee that I've read it. I am extremely active in my comment section, but I do stop and take an extra minute to like really absorb Michael Morgan's comments. So, Knights, 
Let's raise swords for Michael Morgan. I really appreciate your comments. He's also very positive and he interacts really well with people. I like people who are positive and they engage and they interact really well with the people around them. I just, it makes me happy. I like seeing that in my comment section. Michael Morgan's been a very positive, just been a cool guy. So thanks, bud. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I follow Scott. Chris Wolf, same thing. I've said this in Patreon before. Oh my gosh. Chris Wolf. Not to, not to like, you know, cast, I'm not trying to cast a shadow on, on Michael, but Chris Wolf is about the most positive. The guy just radiates golden energy. <laughs> Every time I, he'll leave me a wall. Most of the time, somebody leaves me a wall of text. Like I might, it depends on how it starts, but Chris Wolf, he can leave me a wall of text and I will read every last word of it every single time. Just love that. It's awesome. Really, it's really cool seeing that. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Chris Wolf is so positive, it's almost depressing. <laughs> it's funny, like, it. It's, it's depressing in a way where you, you read it and you're like, that guy's so much happier than I am. Why can't I be that happy? <laughs> I, I feel like I'm a happy person. I'm positive like 99% of the time. And then I read his comment and I'm like, dude, that guy's got, that guy's got life figured out, man. That guy is so positive. He affects it. I've never seen anybody, like even people who are super negative trolls, like looking to leave, they'll read his comment and be like, I can't. I can't do this today. <laughs> I'm just going to like his comment and move on. <laughs> uh, it cracks me up. Oh, yeah. Let, people are like, okay, shut up. We get it. You're happy. Let's flip, up, let's flip open the knives. Okay, so here we go. Um, the uh, ProTech. I know people are asking, where do I get this? Is it, this is coming. I've talked with ProTech. This is coming very soon. Uh, in fact, I think orders have opened up for retailers as far as I understand it. I don't know that. I don't work for ProTech, right? They didn't give me a back a backdoor to all this, but uh, yeah, the pro the new ProTech Rockeye and S35VN is definitely coming. Of course, we have the Mini Adamus, which a lot of you guys watch the review. Uh, I love this thing. It's excellent. If you've been thinking about picking it up, pick it up. Uh, we have, oh, this one we haven't even talked about. This is the $100 M390 Kaiser Beglitter on Blade HQ. Yeah, this is worth it. A hundred bucks for M390. Yeah. And then the Beglitter, like this is an awesome knife even before it was an M390. It's great. You guys saw the Synapse Gen 2. Uh, we have it. Whenever I do the knife opening thing, the population climbs because people hang out. <laughs> the Synapse XL. We have the uh, CKF Rotten Evolution 2.0. Excellent. We have the TRM Shadow, also excellent. We have the Flexosaurus Rex Demco 8020 full tie that people both love and hate to see on every single live stream. I'm sorry. I hope everybody gets one of these. Uh, it's excellent. It's my favorite knife in the entire universe. Um, we have my newly acquired um, Chavez 229 Redemption. Very cool. I'd really like to see him do some texturing on these. I think that people would like different texture patterns. Very cool and in standard form. We have, sorry, guy, I got to try. Oh, by the way, have you guys gone to subscribe to the Knife Nuts podcast yet? Make sure that you do that. It's the very first link in the description. Take some time to do that. I promise I'll still be here. Subscribe to the Knife Nuts podcast because they've got new consistent content on YouTube, which is cool. I've already showed this. Uh, the, uh, of course, the Evo Typhoon in Damasteel. This is the Harpoon 2020 variant. Uh, XM24 Dark Horse with the new Steel Flame Bling, right? Just kind of, yeah. we put you, put you over here. I won't put anything near Scott. So, oh, my new, uh, so I gave my old one away. I had to replace my old SR1 because it's my ultra beater. So I bought a SR1 Lite Tanto. Yeah, these are an 8CR, but listen, in this geometry, I just don't care. For what I'm going to use it for, it, it, this is like ridiculous. This is the most overbuilt, ridiculous knife. 60 bucks. If you want a knife that you can thrash and just not give a crap about, the SR1 Lite is just too, it's too meaty. It's it's too invincible. CRKT Provoke. Eh. Here you go. Sorry. 
Uh, we have the Herman Sting. Oh, very beautiful. Oh, Herman knives are so good, guys. Oh, my gosh. The um, Herman Slim. You hear that sing? Herman knives will sing to you. Listen. Oh, my God. Very cool. Now, these guys are going to get flipped and then put immediately back into the pouch because they're not just valuable, but basically not replaceable at this point. So, safety net. Uh, RJ Martin and Shurgorov Russian Overkill. Very cool and very gone. Uh, there you go, little guy. And we have, um, of course, the equally terrifying to handle, uh, Borka Stitch. Sorry, I have to do that because I know people want, nobody wants to see me slow open it, but I got to, you know, uh, Borka Blade Stitch, Titanium, of course, M390 Blade. Excellent. So there you go. Let's go right back there to bed. And let me just put that. Scott, not that I don't respect the Herman knives, you know, as much. They're, they're up there in the same similar safety zone. But can we bet? I bet we can fit the provoke right there. Still don't want to steal the spotlight of the stitch. Uh, let's just move that. Over there. there we go. Okay. Watching the, uh, the chat now. <laughs> now with the hidden pocket clip. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out, guys. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see here. Yeah, you guys do. Where do you get Herman's? Where do you get Herman's? Polish custom knives exclusively. That is the only place to get them. By the way, the people at Polish Custom Knives are excellent. Their website's great too. They take excellent pictures. Herman knives are worth the money and they have as many different tiers and as many different crazy, you know, they got a bunch of different uh, models and a bunch of different uh, configurations. You know, you want to pay more for something crazy, you can do that. Or you want to get something a little more base, you can do that. Caleb Crockett, thanks for the donation. Picked up the Sage 5 Lightweight on your recommendation and love it. I've got small hands or medium sized gloves. Any recommendations in the $200 to $300 range? Well, I'm glad that you picked up a Sage 5 Lightweight because I truly think that it is probably just by all dimension specs, you know, all the uh, ratios and stuff. I, I truly do believe it's probably the most excellent EDC on the planet. Um, I'm trying to think, two to 300, um, what might be a good recommendation there? That's a weird price range. Well, and it's, it's also hard because I'm bathing in Gatorade right now. Um, well, crap. I'll, I'll just do what I usually do and lean on my, uh, my, my chat here and see if something pops out. Two to 300 EDC in the Sage 5 lightweight range. Go. Call them out. If there's one that, there's one that I, you know, peaks my memory, I'll shout it out there. Um, Absolutely ignored everything else when you were opening those knives. I was in the zone of amazement. <laughs> hey, that's yeah. I mean, like, who why would you pay attention to dialogue when you can look at knives? All right. I mean, words are just words, knives are knives, right? What, what another amazing quote from Metal Complex. Words are words, knives are knives. Congratulations on being observant to the obvious. <laughs> Um, let's see. ZT, you know, 0393 is good, but it's bigger it, and it's heavier than the, uh, than the Sage. I think like in the same ballpark of weight and size, that's what he's looking for. Cause he said he's got, he wears a medium glove, which I, I mean, I think that the Sage five is, that's probably why it's like extra perfect for somebody who's got, you know, like a, like, like that hand size, I think is just great. That's the nice thing about the Sage five lightweight though, is even if you have larger hands, it's also excellent. TRM Neutron is a fantastic choice right there. TRM Neutron, I would highly recommend. Absolutely. Uh, the Drift, is that in the, is that 300? I think the Drift is also an excellent idea if it actually is 300. The Quiet Carry Drift, uh, absolutely. If you like to choke up behind the blade, you know, if you like to choke up before you unbox your knives. <laughs> Oh my God. Are people joking with me when they spell knives wrong? K-N-I-V-E-S is the plural form of 
knife. But I it's spelled wrong so often that I'm I'm wondering, am I being trolled? Is that just a word that people use? Because I like I want to correct people and I'm like, wait a minute. Maybe that's like maybe it's just a term, knives. Knives. K-N-I-F-E-S is not an actual word, but maybe that's just a word people use. <laughs> I can't tell. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to be like the actually it's spelled like this. Oh, <clears throat> right. Because people do that to me. Actually, it's pronounced like this. Oh, simpleton. Uh, drift is 250, 300, depending on scale choice. Okay, so there you go. The drift and the TRM neutron, for sure. For sure. NAFS. There you go. It's spelled K-N-A-F-S. <laughs> Grammar bill. Uh, Tri-State ADC. Make sure you guys follow him on Instagram and subscribe, for sure. Uh, Ace Sonoma. Okay, yeah, Ace Sonoma is pretty cool. That's a more lo long, kind of slender, but it'll probably carry similar, like just in terms of like presence in the pocket because it's it's longer but it's slimmer, right? The Spy Chef is a super well made knife, and it will absolutely do everything that everybody wants it to do for EDC. I just can't love it, and I know like people are like, what the hell? MC does not like this, but I know people always, I get comments every day on that video and they're like, what is wrong with you? I'm sorry. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I make money when people buy that. I linked it on that video and I was like, here it is. If you want to buy it, I don't like it. I, I do. I, I, I benefit when people buy that, but I'm not going to lie and say that I'm, I love it. It is a recommendable knife. It's well-made. It has, you know, it's got great cutting geometry. It's easy to manipulate. The, I mean, like the build is well thought out. I just don't love it. I'm sorry. I'm not even that. I'm not really that sorry. I just don't love it. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Um, what do you think of the Vox F5.5? I've never, I've never handled it. I don't know that I've actually seen it, but I like their designs usually. Oh, you got the spear point. So this, I bought an old spear point at, he, that was Dalton uh, Brownell says, got my first Tinder Adilty uh, spear point equipped. That's great, man. Congratulations. I bought an old, if you guys go way back on my Hinder playlist, you'll see my old um, DLT exclusive spear point or deep swedge spear, XM18, three and a half inch in the probably discontinued black stone wash finish. And I put the green hardware on it. That was a weird one. If you want to see one of my old crazy builds that you can go dig that video up. Um, but uh, I... For whatever reason, I didn't love the blade shape on the XM18 three and a half inch, but oh my God, does it look great on the Eclipse? And I figured out why. The deep swedge is a straight line down the grind. The XM18 has kind of a gunner grip on it, but the Eclipse is more of a straight body. That line on the deep swedge, it works perfectly with the Eclipse. It looks like a little broadsword. It's perfect. That's the perfect blade shape for the Eclipse. It's such an attractive knife. I'm sure that those of you who have that, that version are very happy with it. Uh, fun fact, lefties can spidey flick the chef easily. Yes, that is that is fun fact. It's factual and it's fun. Um, let's see here. Well, my so Mrs. MC is at, is at her mom's house with uh, my son and some of the cousins. She's not back yet. So I don't see any reason to end the live stream, right? I know you guys get stressed out when we hit the nearly one hour mark. Oh, he's going to leave, right? Oh, we love you so much. Please stay. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but now I'm going to keep going. Why would I stop? There we go. That population. People start, start to drop. Oh, well, whatever. Whatever he's going to say at the end. Who cares? We're going to leave. Oh, maybe he's going to stay. Who knows? I'm just talking to myself. I'm sitting here speaking for you. Like nobody's saying this. I'm just saying it to myself. My God, what an egomaniac, right? What's wrong with me? Okay, so what's the fifth one from the left? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, this is the CKF or Custom Knife Factory uh, and Rotten uh, Evolution 2.0. And it is magnificent. Very expensive and hard to get right now. Uh, you can find these periodically at From Russia with Knives. Oh, God. The Ergos. Yeah. I love choking. I mean, like, just to make a point here, you know, you guys, 
with all about those ratios, but the blade to handle ratio the, or the cutting edge to overall length ratio is meh, but, but, but melty ergos. Oh, I mean, you can hold it back here like this and it'll work, but mm, this feels good. You want that effect? You want to feel that effect for not as much money? Um, Spydercos, the PM2, the Para 3, that's what got me to appreciate that, to, over, to, to look past that whole, it needs to look good to my eyeballs thing, right? And then you start to not care, and then you change your whole perspective on what looks good, because you love how it feels, right? One sense overpowers the other, right? That sense kind of goes to bed. Mm, why is there a small hole in that CKF? Yeah, people were asking me, they were like, is it missing a screw? Um, that's the floating area for the uh, stop pin, right? So the stop pin just sits in place and I guess they just didn't close it off. It's just nested in there. They could have filled it in, but they didn't. I, I don't know why, but it just, that's, it is there. I honestly didn't notice it. And I saw people commenting about that. And they're like, did the screw fall out? No. The other cool thing about these, like a lot of CKFs, they come with a ridiculous amount of additional hardware. This thing came with extra bearings, extra pivot hardware, came with an extra lock bar insert. And I have, by the way, experimented with that on the Peter Rosenti uh, and CKF Snafu 2.0. I actually popped out the chip and put the new one in to see if the lock geometry was identical. It's identical. They, they have to cut those lock bar inserts to match the blade because there are little there are slight variances between how they cut each individual blade tang. So they have to make sure that they cut those inserts the same way so that the lock geometry is smooth on disengagement but has solid engagement, right? The fact that both of them fit perfectly, it's not like they just toss one in there. They had to make sure. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I was pretty impressed with that. Or at least that's... You know, I don't do that stuff, but I, I've I've heard that you know lock bar and they have to, they got to be cut right, right? If you talk to Hinder, now each one of those is done, and they they make sure they quality check each one because the geometry, of the insert, and the geometry of the tang, they got to meet, right? The computers and the is it the CAD or whatever that they laser make those, the whatever they're within one one thousandth of an inch on the really high end stuff, but they. They still have to take extra measures on each one individually, as far as I understand. If you're a professional on that stuff, you might be able to correct me, but that's as far as I understand. And I'm way out of my league talking about it. Have I ever worn out a lock bar insert? No, I never have. I, I honestly think under the most strenuous use, uh, a properly heat treated blade with proper geometry and uh, properly treated lock bar insert will probably last the hardest of users, as long as they're not doing stupid stuff with their knife. I don't know, 30 to 40 years. Somebody who's just EDCing it, it'll probably last you 1,462 years at least, right? Most of these titanium frame locks that are around right now, you bet your kids are going to get them and their kids might get them, right? I don't know. Uh, Wearing out a hardened lock into it would probably take a long time. I agree. <laughs> Arius dropping on the ninth. Where, Joey Fant? Where? Enlighten us. Because I don't know either. And I need you guys to tell me so I can tell other people. A lot of what I learn on live streams actually ends up going in my community tab. So, yeah. Um... Love the action and fidget factor without paying Benchmade prices. I mean, yeah, Benchmade's it. Benchmade's up there for sure. But the nice thing is, is now finally I can confidently say Benchmade's quality control is pretty darn consistent. I'm very happy to say that. And you know, they they they've somebody made the comment today. They're like, yeah, you really like that mini Adamus, but I feel like Benchmade's probably sending you the best, of the best. And I commented back. I said, okay. But Benchmade has only ever sent me three models. The other 50 have been sent by my viewers. So I've had a pretty good pool to experience and see the evolution of Benchmade's quality control over time. Christopher Hayes, thanks for that donation. And that really cool, well, it's like a, it's a, 
old like Super Nintendo controller with the uh, eight-bit glasses. Nice. That's cool. Oh gosh, I haven't even plugged my. Oh wait, hold on. One more donation. Crispy EDC, thanks for donation. It says hype. Oh my gosh, yeah. That's that's a good way to say. I am like everything that I do and say is unintentional hype. <laughs> oh man, thanks for that. Ah, uh, for any of you who are shameless plug alert. For any of you, of you who are wondering, what are those little helmets beside uh, people's names in chat? Those are people who have joined my Knights of the Round uh, uh, membership program. Uh, there's a link for that right down in the description. It's the second link in the description. Uh, if you join Knights of the Round, you'll gain access to the color-changing badging system. It'll change colors the longer you've been a knight. Uh, and you'll also gain access to the exclusive Excalibur emojis, which I'm sure my knights will show up in chat right now. It's $2 a month. It supports the channel. And I'll be able to see your badge. Everybody else will be able to see your badge in chat and under videos. And you'll always have those emojis for regular videos or live stream, whatever you want. Uh, but anyways, thank you, Knights, for helping me to promote that. That's been very helpful, by the way. You guys are you guys are actually 200 strong now and beyond. There are 200 Knights in the Metal Army. So thank you. Cheers to you guys. Uh, yeah, and yes, if you're if those swords look familiar, yes, they are absolutely from popular movies and video games, and I'm sure you guys can pick those out. Eric Hampson, hey, MC, I'm looking uh, to get my first real knife. What do you think of the Best Deck Lion? So if you go back to my review of the Best Deck Lion, at one point, that was my very favorite budget knife in existence. I still very highly recommend that knife. I still think that is an excellent knife. I also still think it's a super underrated knife. That's a good looking knife. What are they? 45 bucks? Yeah, go for it. Best Deck Lion. I gave that knife as a gift to a local friend and I just saw him the other day and he was like, dude, I love this thing. And he pulled it out. It was all caked up with gunk, but still functioning just fine. He had never adjusted the pivot. Nothing, nothing was loose. The, the blade was dull from use for months, right? Because uh, he was using it just like, he's not like a super knife guy. He was just using it however, right? Uh, yeah, it was great. Go for it. Best deck line. Absolutely. Jacob Bosworth, welcome to the Knights of the Round. Knights, raise your swords. All hail Jacob Bosworth. Welcome, buddy. Thank you very much. Uh, Drew Becker says, wow, I should have got a rock guy. Actually, the new ones haven't dropped yet, man. So be watching Blade HQ. I would, I would venture to guess within the next few weeks you'll see him drop. There's the swords. I always love seeing those swords pop up. That's so cool. And they're all different colors, so it looks great. As soon as YouTube allows me to create animated uh, emojis, I will. they will be animated. I have no idea how I'm going to do it. But if you guys watch my Instagram, like if you watch the stories on my Instagram before um, live streams, you can actually go watch it right now. Um, those are still images that I find on Google that I think are really cool. And then I use a program called, well, it was Pixaloop, but it's bought out by another company. And I use that program to animate the images. Essentially, it's really easy. You just, you freeze certain parts of the images and then you draw lines to like make the movement. And then you can add little effects. Those are really fun. And they take me like, ten. no, and no, I'm not paid out by that company. It sounds like an ad. I'm just telling you guys, that's what I do. It takes like 10 to 15 minutes. It's really fun. And then I put music to it. Um, Jared Metaska. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's the guy. Is that? Make yourself known, Jared Metaska. Why am I recognizing your name? <laughs> Welcome to the Knights of the Round. All hail, Jared Metaska. Knights, raise your swords. Jared, I, you, yeah, yeah, bear with me. I have a million people's. There, yeah, the Crusader. That he's. That's the gentleman who made me the excellent deal on the uh, the bling, right? The earring for the uh, XM24, which, by the way, I will never, ever get rid of. I have learned my lesson acquiring and selling steel flame. Those are uh, basically relics of the past, certain variants. That's, a, that's very hard to come across. Um, and, uh, because of his kindness, I was able to have that. So that will be with me forever. It will likely stay on the, I felt like the dark horse was the, that was the knife to put it on. Uh, that's, that's how important that was to me. Tempest tease. Scott says Tempest tease. Oh, what do you, what do you mean? 
Are you, so Scott, are you, are you gonna send that? Are you gonna send that for me to show? I gotta wait for Scott to confirm that. I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna officially say that unless that's actually what he's implying. Um, if that, I mean, that would be, uh, that'll be a mile marker for sure. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. So, holy crap. Okay. So Scott, that's the gentleman who provided the um, Borka Stitch and the uh, RJM Martin and Shiro collab. So Scott has something like beyond, just beyond comprehension legendary. You guys know my opinion of Sharp by Design Customs. I have literally never handled anything that's more perfect than that. And he has an ultra, ultra, ultra custom Tempest that he won the, uh, apparently won the lottery for, for uh, like when they held it, he, he had the opportunity to buy it um, and uh, he's offering to send it. So just that's awesome. And I'm kind of trying to like hold down my excitement right now, but that's something that will be kind of an event uh, that's something that's very, if you're not familiar with sharp by design, incredibly sought after knives, unbelievably, we're talking like next level beyond master craftsmanship. I've never, I've never handled anything that is as precision as a sharp by design, but this is a crazy, insane variant of an already incredibly difficult knife or model to get. So Scott, that's awesome. I can't, I can't wait to see. I mean, I'm lit like right now. <laughs> I'm actually, you guys know what the hot static feels like when you get excited, it runs down the back of your neck and kind of through everything. And you get that warm kind of, you know, like you, like you woke up in a hot tub full of applesauce. <laughs> that's exactly what it feels like. <laughs> that's exactly what it feels like oh my gosh i am so i'm very excited for that <laughs> man oh my gosh i'm all my eyes are almost watering from the excitement of that i am so pumped <laughs> that's awesome yeah <laughs> what's the quote from um <laughs> Who's seen the old YouTube videos of uh, uh, Tourette's guy? And not, by the way, not to come down on an actual medical condition that is very serious. That's not at all what I'm saying. But those old videos, you guys know this quote. Don't talk shit about Total. <laughs> That's how I feel about <laughs> Sharp by Design. Don't, Don't talk, talk shit about S by Design or Sharp by Design, SBD. Uh, I know, I know some of you guys have watched those. Those are classic, man. <laughs> oh, that's total. I don't want, I don't like that. Don't talk shit about total. <laughs> oh my God. That's the best. If you guys have never seen, oh my gosh, those old, 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 old YouTube. Best. <laughs> the scene with the bird. I, I seriously, I almost... I, I almost fell apart, like on a cellular level. Have you ever laughed so hard where you can feel your soul leaving your body? That scene with the freaking bird, man, I just lost my mind. And I still go back and watch that. The two, mo the two funniest things on the internet, by the way, side rant, the two funniest things that exist on the internet are the old videos of the Tourette's guy, which may or may not be real. I have no idea. I don't even care at this point. And... Tell me, seriously, some, you guys have to know this one. Type one, if you know what I'm talking about. The definitive Winnebago man. Please, please, somebody tell me you've seen that, that the, the, the outtakes of the definitive Winnebago man. If you've never seen the definitive Winnebago man, for the love of all things holy, you have to, have to as soon as the slide stream's over, if you want to, I mean, like, be careful, right? Because you might laugh so hard your soul leaves your body, just like the weasels from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Um, but, uh, oh, <laughs> we've got, and we've got flies everywhere. One. <laughs> Think of a bobber schnobber, Robert. I, my brother and I will watch that after a few Gatorades. We will just sit and watch that. Basically, what it is, is it's, it's legitimate uh, cuts from... 
this guy from what was it? Was it the late eighties or early nineties? He's trying to film um, actual ads for the Winnebago company. And he just cannot get through these lines and he has the worst mouth ever, but the presentation of the ad is so professional. Like he's, he's like, you know, luxury accommodations. And like this, it's like panning and it's old school VHS quality. And then they'll, they'll have to cut because he'll trip or say something stupid. And he has the word, like the enunciation of the horrible things that he says when he messes up. It's just gold. It's so perfect. It's the best. <laughs> Don't slam the effing door. <laughs> I'm going to give a clue here. <laughs> I'm sure it sounds stupid. I'm not, I'm not delivering it co correctly. I can't do it justice, but I promise you, I know there's going to be people messaging me on Instagram tomorrow going, I did not know about that. And I looked it up and I laughed so hard. I thought I was going to die. I promise you, it is the funniest. All it is is outtakes of this guy trying desperately to get through this torturous, <laughs> these torturous Winnebago ads. <laughs> the fly thing, when he, it's like, there's one scene where you can tell he doesn't even know the camera's rolling and there's like, he's going out of his way to try and catch these flies by hand. He's aggressively going after them. It's so funny. The definitive Winnebago man. Uh, Eric Hampson says, what's it called again? The definitive Winnebago man. I think there are two outtake reels and they are internet gold. They are the best. It is the single funniest thing that has ever existed on the internet. <laughs> uh, let's see here. It's super offensive and there's lots of cuss words in it. So do not play it super loud if you've got kids or if you don't, I mean, if you don't want to hear that stuff then don't, don't uh, put it on, but it, it is very funny. <laughs> um, let's see here. <laughs> they did a full length. Yeah, they did. Actually, that was kind of sad. They did a full length documentary because that guy, so the story is he actually, as far as I understand, he got fired by Winnebago after some time or some really they he had no idea that's that the the camera crew was actually putting together a, a like basically a gag reel and it surfaced and became this insane internet sensation and they did a documentary they found him and he was like no leave me alone he like lives in a cabin off of like out in the middle of nowhere and he's like i don't want to talk about this but the outtakes are gold check out the documentary if you want the full story i may not have I may not be giving the right information on. I have no idea. I, I I can't remember honestly. It's been so long. Any other have to watch videos? Um, if you're a if you're a DBZ fan, you have to watch Dragon's Ball PP. And I did say that. I know that sounds cringe, but that's exactly what it's called. Dragon's Ball PP is the most absurd um, farce of. <laughs> It's just stupid. It's so stupid, but it's so funny. If you grew up watching that show and the really awkward animation and the, the bad translations and the awkward transitions between scenes, they, they really take advantage of that and they make kind of a whimsical farce of the whole show. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> Abridged is also great. If, you've never, if you're a big DBZ fan, you should watch Dragon, uh, DBZ Abridged. It's great. That's just coming from a DBZ fan. That's not like a must watch for everybody. If you're if you're a DBZ fan, go watch that. If you're not a DBZ fan, you're going to be like, what, what, what is this? This is terrible, right? But <laughs> Virginia! <laughs> oh my God. The funniest scene is when he, uh, when Vegeta's on the ground and, and uh, <laughs> Goku's just landing and he's like, he, he forgets that Vegeta's basically, you know, passed on the ground and he's exchanging, Goku's exchanging with Frieza and Vegeta, you know, basically like, he kind of comes to life for a second. He's like, Kakarot! And the look on, the way that they animate his sudden surprise that, Vegeta's talking to him and his intrigue and whatever Vegeta's about to say, the the way that they animate his facial expression is the just the dumbest and funniest. It's one of those weird things where like your your internal subconscious just for whatever reason links up with it. It just makes me laugh really hard. 
I'm going on way too long about this, but it's very specific. If you're not a DBZ fan, you're not going to think it's funny. Um, favorite console? The original NES. The original NES. And specifically for Super Mario 3. I think Super Mario 3 is, is the greatest video game that's ever been. And yes, I've played a, a lot of the good ones. A lot of the new ones, a lot of the old ones. Super Mario 3, I think, is the greatest game that's ever been made. Leroy Jenkins, if you've never watched Leroy Jenkins, that's a good one, but I think everybody's seen that. Even if you're not a World of Warcraft fan, I think people can understand what happened there. <laughs> that was the most baller move. <laughs> it's so dumb to still be laughing at that, but oh my God. If you've ever done that raid or sat for hours to get to that point and had it ruined by one asshole, <laughs> and that guy really... <laughs> That guy really ruined it for everybody. Oh, God. <laughs> that, that is so funny. I love that. Um... <laughs> John Wright, your laugh is contagious. Well, I'm glad because I, I wheeze, and I'm sure some people do not find it. Um, I'm sure some people really hate it. You can thank my dad. If, uh, if my dad, for whatever... I joked with my dad. I'm like, you should, you should come on a live stream. Um, my dad is like 10 times the, he, it's the same laugh, but it's way more like aggressive and he'll bump his knees on the table and not crap over. That's the only reason I haven't had him down here is cause he can't, my dad's way taller than me. He's like six. I think my dad's six, three and he's real, he's like a lot like lankier. And he, he also has huge hands from working construction his whole life. So he's this big lanky, like big, heavy handed guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm kind of a stocky, chunky kind of can't I'm, I'm shaped a lot like a can, uh, Campbell's can of uh, tomato soup. Um, my son heard you laughing from his room and he started laughing. Well, I'm, I'm glad that I could spread that joy. Roger Edwards. Love your channel. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I have no, honestly, I've been talking for so long. I haven't been focusing. I'm sorry. I've just been like talking and ranting. <laughs> Alex, <laughs> you've spent an appropriate amount of time talking about DBZ on a YouTube video. Yeah. I know that there's so many, like, there's, there's a lot of people who don't even know what that is, but there are so many people who know what DBZ is. I mean, like, not, not a lot of cartoons that began literally in, when was Dragon Ball? 1980? 79, 80, 81, somewhere in there. And in the, it's still going. The newest movie came out in 2018. Not a lot of shows doing that. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, a lot of people know. How tall am I? I am exactly 5 foot 11 and a half. You know how I know that? Because when I got there, I was like, boy, I can't wait until I hit 6 feet tall. I was 15 when I hit 5 11 and a half. And then God was like, you're done, bro. You ain't getting six feet. I am not six feet tall. My brother, my little brother is exactly on the dot, laser perfect, six feet tall. Michael Complex uh, is six feet tall. I am exactly a half an inch shorter than my little brother. No, DBZ was Midnight's, but Dragon Ball, the, 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 I mean, sure, of course... Uh, Ashira Toriyama was Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. So technically, the start of everything was, I think, 79 to 80. Yeah, I think so. Uh, it might be 81. I can't remember. No. No, if you're curious, the size of my shoe is 13. I don't know why you would care, but there you go. Um... Nick, I gotta say, I don't watch live streams too often. Two for two, you actually respond to comments. Nice getting a guy that replies to comments that aren't parents. <laughs> care. Ah, hey, cool, man. Yeah, for sure. I, I will, I will absolutely cheers you. Thanks. Um, hanging upside down for a minute. I think hanging upside down for a minute would be um, not good for me or my audience or anything that's on the table. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the average height in the United States? Isn't it the average height in the United States? I think you guys can Google it. I'm pretty sure it's five foot nine or five foot ten. So hey, yay, yay me, right? Who cares? Height, 
height, right? Some people are really tall, some people aren't. Uh, thousands of Dragon Ball spinoff episodes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, new Elite Patreon member today. Hey, awesome. Yeah, Jason, I did see that. That's awesome, man. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. We do cool stuff on Patreon, guys. I also, exclusively, when I do sell my own knives, guess where they go? They go to patrons, and I offer pretty serious discounts, as I'm sure my patrons in here will tell you about. Um, but we do awesome stuff on Patreon, and I do a once-a-week Patreon-exclusive upload, and those are fun and secret, but you'll find out if you want to join. I have a tier that's $1, um, specifically for people who just want to be a part of stuff. You'll gain access to everything that's involved with uh, exclusive content and anything special I do there. Um, anything beyond that is your choice, of course, but there are rewards for joining higher tiers. It's completely and totally up to you, but we do cool stuff on Patreon, and I am extremely active there as well. Um, there's a link for Patreon down in the description as well, as I'm sure you guys know, because I say it in every single upload like a maniac. Oh, let's see here. Patreon, yeah, pay, uh, Nick Alien, Patreon link is in the description. I think under the, there's like the main four, there's the retailers I promote, uh, Knife Nuts podcast, if you guys have not subscribed to them, uh, that's the first link. But under the first dotted line, I think is my Patreon um, link. Patreon.com backslash Metal Complex. Uh... <laughs> oh, by the way, um, Patreon members and people who are watching this live stream, uh, there's a new special sticker coming. I'm sure you guys have seen my stickers. I'll show off something that's more so a Patreon item, but I do have lots of different stickers. Um, the Golden Knight helmet, right? That's what the shield's based off. Uh, there is a new version. This is this is created by Endure88 on Instagram, uh, and he does all of my channel art. Um, but uh, there's a new one coming, and it's the titanium textured helmet. He managed to create a, he did it manually. He created a titanium textured helmet. So I'm having some holographic titanium textured night helmets made that I will share with everybody. So we'll do some type of special giveaway for those. Oh my gosh. 127, three more minutes. You guys can ask me whatever you want, knife related or not. This is the nonsense portion or <laughs> I'm sure you guys think the nonsense portion, the entire thing has been nonsense. You can ask me any question you want and I will answer the majority of them. I'm sure if I'm not comfortable with it, then I won't. But yeah, feel free to ask me whatever. I'm a fairly open book. Uh, let's see. What do you do for a living? Still digital advertising. It's just, I mean, everything has changed since 2020, but yeah. Uh, chocolate or peanut butter, peanut butter. I, I mean, I like chocolate, but I, I just love peanut. I'll eat, I'll eat it right out of the container with a spoon. What's my back squat? Uh, my best back squat ever. I think, God, you know, I, I can't remember. It's been so long since I really, I want to say my best back squat ever was between 405 and 425. It's really not that impressive. Honestly, anymore, I put 275 to 315 on there and I'll do it for five to seven. I, I just don't go that hard on back squat because I feel like I'm going to break. Like I just, I'm just not, I just can't do it anymore. It's not like I'm like, oh, it's not beneficial. No, I legitimately have, I just am, not, I'm lazy and I just don't want to because it hurts. <laughs> and you have like, you got to get parallel. You got to go 90 because you know, people are watching. They're like, is he going 90? Is he going to get 90? Or is he going to be that guy that just like does a little bend, benderoo, right? You got to go 90. Gotta go 90 or lower, or it doesn't count. If you're that guy that puts five plates on and basically, you know, does a calf raise, you didn't do anything. You gotta go 90 degrees or it doesn't count. M, thanks for donation. You need a shot for sure. I fortunately don't have any of that in my house because I can't handle it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Wanna see that stitch. All right, here it is. One more time with the safety net. Oh, yes. There we go. Beautiful. All right. Thank you very much to Scott for sending that in. Okay. Uh, ended 
up buying an knife while watching your live stream and didn't even finish my laundry. <laughs> uh, that's right. You can, I mean, here's the thing with squat. You can go as deep as you want and it can be like substantially more beneficial, but you have to, you have to go 90. Oh, hey, come here. Oh, it's okay. Come here. You go to bed? Okay. You want to say hi? People are watching. You can say hi. Hi. That's my son who's going to bed. <laughs> okay. Good night, buddy. Love you. See ya. Yeah. It's okay. See ya. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Chick fil A or Zaxby's? I've eaten a Chick fil A once. It was pretty good. I've never eaten at Zaxby's. So I guess Chick fil A. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm looking. I'm looking. People talking about squat. <laughs> yeah, I'm awfully opinionated about squat for somebody who can't do very much. <laughs> Oh, 325 for a Riot made three and a half inch M390 sound about right. Normally out of my price range, but really, yeah. I mean, honestly, Riot 325, that right there, I'm going to tell you, yes. A Riot's worth it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I understand knives being cool looking subjectively having different applications, different steels, and yada, yada. But don't you think it eventually becomes the money hole? I mean, yeah, it absolutely does, 100%. But you don't necessarily have to get out the same monetary value that you put into it. For me, I value very much the amount of joy that I get from the object, right? So even if I don't get, like, if I, I can't equate the value to the amount of use that I get out of it, right? I will buy things that are so far out of the perimeters of what I'm going to use it for and, and never care that they never meet those. It never meets that end zone. Right. But I get so much joy out of the object itself. Right. Even hypothetically, just what it's capable of in my imagination or just because of what, it, how it's made, the intricacy that's behind it. I just get so much joy that, you know, for me, it's like if I pay 500 for something and I get it, do I feel that 500, do I feel it, right? I, it's not necessarily about use for me. It is for some people, right? Do I, can I feel it, right? And if it's there, then then I, I love it. It's worth it for me, you know? I think that I think people are like that with a lot of things. It's the joy. It's the experience you get, right? Okay, 132. Guys, this has been an excellent live stream. This is fun. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, sorry there wasn't one last week, but this was an excellent makeup for it. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. I really have to go to the bathroom. That's going to be pretty much it for tonight. I'll say one more time, if you have not done so before you leave, subscribe to the Knife Nuts podcast. It's the very first link in the description. Do that before you go. They deserve it. Watch their content. They're excellent. If you've never listened to the podcast, oh my God, it's incredible. Anyways, I hope you all have an excellent rest of your evening and an excellent rest of your weekend. Bye.